So if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you might recognise this bad boy. This normally sits on the on the shelf there in the background. This is my Nikon 200 to 500 beast of a lens. Now I bought this lens for landscape photography for actually two images that I'd I'd had in mind. So um, landscape photography on a tripod, not moving, not holding it. The thing weighs a ton, so yeah, I didn't buy it for what we're going to use it for today. But uh, in this video, it was actually really, really good fun going out and shooting with this and trying something radically different. So in this video, we're actually going out and doing some equestrian photography. Now, I'm just going to premise this that I've never, ever done equestrian photography before. It was something I've always wanted to do. And one of my subscribers reached out and, um, and said he's going to this event called Badminton, um, which I'd never heard of, even though it's absolutely mammoth. It's gigantic. It was really good fun. And so I'd never heard of it. And I'd, Instantly, I just got so excited about the, the potential of getting some really cool shots. Now, if you've ever done sports photography, um, I've been a photographer for 20 years. I've photographed events for 20 years, weddings, everything, commercial, pretty much every every type of event. And I've, I, I stand by the fact that you can't blame your gear. You should never blame your gear. You work with the tools you've got, limited by your own creativity. Now, on, with sports photography, it's slightly different because if you haven't got a camera that can track or a lens that can track or deal with ISO or whatever, it's really flipping difficult, right? So if you know anything about the Nikon Z7 camera, it, you'll know it's amazing for landscape photography, but pretty much bugger all else, right? So me and the Z7 and this lens at times had a bit of a fallout, but the X-T5, the Fujifilm X-T5 saved the day. Uh, but it was really, really good fun. Hope you enjoy the video. Um, it was it was a challenge though, so yeah. But it's, it's my first time, right? Let me know what you think of the photographs. I'll see you in a minute, let's get stuck into it. Right then, found a composition for shot one. Um, basically what we wanted to do is find a find a, a situation, find a position where we can get multiple shots out of out of one sort of area. So I've got my two lenses set up, Nikon Z7 Mark I. A bit worried about the autofocus on it, but it's the best we got. And that is the 200 to 500 5.6 Nikon. The lens I really, really love. I haven't had it long, but really, really like it. Um, I'm going to put it in sport mode, so it's still got image stabilisation on. I'm not going to turn it off. I'm going to have a sport mode allow me to be able to pan, and the the, the, um, the ibis isn't going to isn't going to fight. Um, as you pan it, the, the ibis isn't going to try and fight you. And then on the XT5, you've got the 5140. I'm going to be I'm leaving this at f4, so it's a little bit brighter than the um, than the 5.6 of the Nikon, but pretty much the same equivalent depth of field. Um, I'm, sh I'm shooting in a T and C mode on the Fuji, which isn't the way I normally shoot, but it's it's good because I can adjust. I can keep an eye on the histogram and I can adjust the exposure using the back dials there. So obviously that's not going to be doing anything. Um, but yeah, continuous high, so that's going to be doing 15 frames a second. This only does, I think, uh, about eight, eight or nine frames a second. So the other lens you can see in the background is the Vilchox 75mm 1.2. The Vilchox have just sent me that, sent me that um, lens this week. So hopefully I'll get to take a few snaps of that. And then I've got my monopod here. This would be really good for obviously keeping the camera really steady. So I can use the monopod just to stabilise the... And it goes nice and high as well. So when I'm on, when I'm on my step ladders, the monopod will be uh, really, really good. ISO on the Nikon is um, 800. F5.6 is 5.6 lens. I might stop down a little bit just to get a bit, bit sharper because I'm a bit worried about shooting wide open on that lens. Um, but 2,000 of a second is my shutter speed. The whole sky is like a giant softbox. There's no variation in light. So I'm shooting manually. I was going to shoot in um, uh, manual aperture, manual exposure, uh, manual shutter, and then have auto ISO. But to be honest, I'd rather have consistency in the images. When I come to edit them, they're, they're all very easy to edit. They're all the same. So with, with light like this, where it's all one big, one big flat sky, it's easy to shoot manual. You haven't got to worry about your, your, your metering and obviously just keeping an eye on the histogram. There is a table there, so it's, it's likely that somebody is going to be right in, in the way, but I'm hoping that I won't. I'm hoping that stepladders will let me get above where people are standing and I'll be able to pick out, pick out the shot I want 
How long is the, how long way is the start from here? It's not far, is it? How long, sir? The start. How far is the start away from here? Um, they're going to be eight minutes when I get here. Oh right, so it takes them eight this minutes from the start. Two, this is two thirds of the way round. Oh, good grief! Right, okay. Yeah, so we've got a bit of time, and we know it's kick off eight minutes before they get to this bit. So just as I said, the flipping sky was consistent and nice and even. The sun's just blitzed out now so I'm actually thinking I might have to go to also ISO because right now I would have been clipped and obviously mid shooting so if they were coming over those jumps now I'd have lost those photographs because that sun is going to be I think after um, I think by about one o'clock it's going to be really warm today so it's definitely it's definitely the better option now is to go back to auto ISO annoyingly because I like the consistency and I like shooting like that but yeah that's probably the best thing to do so we get a bit of a warning just listen for the whistles and try and watch that screen at the same time basically yeah, <laughs> they're off they're off so can't just photograph that screen and, and be done with it <laughs> right here we go the beauty of going we're going to start finish as well because that's where you like to say you get all those shots of the wet and the horses being dressed down and stuff right and that you know really interesting photos you can get there oh here we go Right, so I've got I've got my composition. Oh no, she's gone stood there. Why is that lady stood there? I'm sure wasn't there a second ago. I was looking forward to that. I was looking forward to that. The lady um, stood there when I was getting ready to talk to you, and I didn't realise she was going to be there. And looked up and flipping someone was blocking my view. But basically, the camera's not tracking, the Z7 is not tracking. Uh, the dynamic AF is doing all right, but I still just don't trust it. So I've got a composition, so I've got my focal point in the top right-hand third. Focal point right near the top, it's not on the third, it's above that, so that I'm forced to put the rider's head on that focal point. And then um, I've moved my focus down to just below 300 mil, uh, my focal point. Focal length, hang on. <laughs> focal length. Because... Um, I'm used to trying to get it right in, in camera, I'm used to trying to get the composition and everything so avoiding cropping and uh, on this you just can't. So I'm allowing a bit of a crop, probably about 30% crop, but at least I'll get the shot and I'll be a bit more a bit more lenient and stuff. So it's going well though I think. I just uh, I wish I could rely more on the camera's autofocus. I wish I could trust it. There's a guy standing next to me with a Canon R3 rubbing it in. <laughs> As we like that composition, it just wasn't going to work. Uh, we've got to find another. We did eye up another, another composition down here, so we're going to try and get to that. But the crowds are making it very, very difficult to to get a shot as we're walking around. But uh, I look proper pressed now with this over here. <laughs> really, really good fun. It's challenging. I'm, uh, my confidence has been not massively because the tracking just isn't isn't working on the Nikon, um, and I haven't found a shot that the uh, the XT5 or the 5140 will work yet. So. Fingers crossed we'll get a good one though. I want one decent shot from each composition, that's what I want. Sorry to interrupt the video, I hope you're enjoying it. I just wanted to let you know, finally, F8 issue three is now available. So if you're, I know I appreciate this as a video on equestrian photography, but if you're into street photography or if you want a way of, a guaranteed way of improving your photography and mastering your camera, there is no better way than street photography. So F8 digital zine is now available from my website. It's 40 page, info zine so basically i've got 40 images that i've taken recently and then the backstory behind the images how the images could have improved the settings that we use to take the images um, what i've learned from each image the mistakes obviously they're all high-res images so you can zoom in and you can you know critique till the cows come home giving you a full full critique uh, full critique license but it's a really really it's an info zine basically so you can go through there's 40 different the basically different styles of street photography as well so it's all about learning it's all about sharing sharing my mistakes, all about helping you guys out. And obviously, if you download this, this uh, the uh, the zine as well, it's a huge, huge support for the channel. So do check out um, 
uh, F8 and issue three, that's now available. Also on the website as well, if you subscribe, I'm gonna start doing, and, uh, and check out the dates on the website, I'm gonna start doing photo walks around Europe, around the UK. Um, I've got a lot of things planned that I'm gonna try and organize. So if you subscribe to the, to the newsletter, you can be involved in that. Yeah, so do check that out. It's a huge, huge way of supporting the channel. I'll let you get back to the video, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the zine if you download it. Thanks so much. We're just coming up to the, uh, the shot I'm most hopeful for, but well, the composition I'm most hopeful for, should we say. They come down this hill, and um, we've got rid of our stepladders now. We put them back in the van because we didn't think we were going to need them, but I might regret that. Hopefully the 500 mil will be enough. So um, we get, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely vantage point from here. <laughs> All right, how are you doing? Moved down again because I just felt that that image was just flat, not exciting. Didn't, didn't really inspire much confidence at all, so I thought I'd come down, try and get a bit more of a side view, but you can't really, because if I go over more to the side, I've got loads of people in the way, so I kind of force where I am, but I think this is a bit, but this one's a better view. All right, I've gone on to the X-T5. Two reasons, the um, 200 mil was, was just too tight. I needed to come back. I've only come back about 30 mil, so I'm about 170 really. It's a bit annoying. And also the X-T5, I've got to give it a go because I've not really tried the uh, the head detect, face detect, whatever you want to call it, at this event. I'm not, I'm not taking the food out of the bag, so I thought I'd give it a go. And straight away, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a game changer. The Nikon was just, the tracking mode weren't working and the uh, Dynamic AF was, but the horse is so, everything's moving so much. And um, I just found it too difficult to keep the Dynamic AF on the, on the Nikon. So I've just gone, gone to the X-T5, uh, 5140, one of my favorite lenses for events and stuff. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. <laughs> this is locking on, found the head. Oh. To say the X-T5 is a bit better than <laughs> the statement. I really want a close-up portrait out of this, so I'm taking it, taking it landscape, but I'm definitely going to be cropping a portrait out of it. Yeah, that's found the head over there. It's amazing. It said it was finding the face, that the finding the um, the head the whole way over that. It didn't seem to lose focus at all, but <laughs> we're going to chimp now and have a look. That's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. The difference it makes you makes you feel so much more confident when you think you're not. Yeah, you're getting the shot. It's cool. It's uh, it's impressive. I've got animal animal AF on the uh, on the Fuji as well. I could actually put it <laughs> detects the face of the horse again. Oh, I lost it! It lost it. Just it, it picked up the flag at the last second. I don't know if it. Oh. it picked up the bloody flag. Did you get it? Yeah, she's sharp. Oh, for goodness! Four thousandth of a second. ISO 400, 3.2, and it's uh, a nailed focus. Flipping impressive, Fuji. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm at all. The XT5 is a different league to what I'm used to with Fuji. I'm really, really impressed. I'm, I, I can't imagine what the XH2S is like. It just seems to be a good light, finding the face in there. And why it jumped over to that flag at the last second, I don't know, but I wish I could show you what was going on. I haven't got one of those Atmos things. So 20 frames a second. So we get on. Nora, crazy. Didn't hear a flipping thing, so the camera's not making a noise. <laughs> um, so I settings, continuous eye, 1.29 crop in electronic shutter at 20 frames a second. So I had to come down to 90 mil. That's incredible. How many extra photographs? I know it's obvious, but that is incredible. That 20 frames a second is friggin' awesome. Every, oh, that's, it's not something I ever thought I ever needed. Have you ever photographed like a boxing? I've done boxing before. But if, yeah, if you've got to do a lot of sports to justify it, but that is ace, that is ace. 20 frames a second, that's friggin' ace. I'm really selective about where the, um, I was gonna say hooves or paws or feet, I don't know. <laughs> what position everything is on the horse. 
it just, it just 20 frames a second just gives you that extra ability just to be so fussy, you know? That's freaking nuts. There we go, lovely, that's nice. Yeah. Can you go a little bit closer, girls, or not? Just to close that gap, that's it. That's it, there you go, that's it. Look at, there you go. Then 1980. Can you wait a moment, please? There's an important photography session going on. <laughs> 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 Heading into the heart of the Vicarage Field. And they can pick up the fighter of Samson House Scott. Well, Helen Martin and... and uh, just the right focal uh, length, actually, isn't it? Company. Wow, 75mm on the Fuji, it's just the right focal length for this. Yeah. Focus point, the top left. Continuing their badminton journey this weekend. So just a two-hour session going on here. Back on the 51. Four minutes, three 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 minutes, How do you think that went then? I think we did all right. First ever attempt. I uh, I really enjoyed it. Massive thanks to Will for the invite to come along on, on the day. Really, really enjoyed it. His knowledge in the industry, in the sport, and his passion is absolutely inspiring. So to be there with somebody who knows the course, knows, got loads of tips as to how to approach the, 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 the event, and obviously knowing some of the riders as well was uh, was a real privilege. So yeah, massive thank you to Will. Really, really enjoyed his expertise, his passion, and and, and spending the day with him. So huge thanks, mate. Um, as I said, the Z7 really was not for it, um, but I did find that changing different AF modes, still in AFC, but di di I tr even tried pre-AF in, and that didn't work. So yeah, the the Z7 was not for it. The the lens, the 200 to 500, I actually thought did really well. Um, even tracking things that were coming towards the camera, I think the lens did do well. It was the limit of the camera was the problem. Also, I'd say I couldn't believe it, but going from I think this does about six frames a second. I don't think it does the nine or ten, whatever Nikon say it does. I think it does about six. When I switched the Fuji over to uh, twenty frames a second, the and the ability that the XT5 got of tracking now. In this day and age, 2023, the ability we've got in cameras now for tracking just means that you've you've got so much more creative license. You're concentrating more and actually enjoying your photography and, and, and creating more creative images as opposed to trying to nail focus in certain uh, certain difficult scenes. So the X-T5's tracking was amazing. The lens did fantastic, the 50-140. But that 20 frames a second, of course, it meant I came back with a billion photographs to go through. But I had the flexibility of being so fussy as to wear the, the <laughs> whatever they're called, the hooves, <laughs> as my thumbnail, the hooves were positioned. Um, and it was really, really nice. I've never, ever 
thought I'd benefit from 20 frames a second before, but I really did on that shoot. So yeah, massively think impressed with the Fuji on that. I'm just going to say straight off, I wish it had a grip because I hated this. And without the monopod, I'd have been buggered. The monopod saved the day, really. I'm sh hugely grateful for having the monopod on the day. The Viltrox let me down massively. It's not a lens that is going to be designed for sport, but it messed up one of my favorite shots of the day, and I can't really forgive it for that. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't call it a pro lens, but it really it does excel. I've done a video on, the, on this lens and I'll put the video there and it's absolutely amazing lens. It's my favorite third party Fuji lens. It's absolutely incredible for everything else, just not sports. So the Viltrox let me down, but it was a very, very fun day and I massively got the bug. So I, I, I'm definitely looking to get a sports camera that's gonna be more professional, if that makes sense, and go in there more professionally. I made some really good connections. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do a question again. Really did enjoy it. Massively got bitten by the ball. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any tips for how you approach sports photography or question photography, let me know in the comments and uh, yeah, be good. If you'd like to do a, me to do a video on on more of a technical aspect of the, of the camera setup, let me know in the comments as well. And yeah, check out my zine and I'll be very, very grateful for that. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button if you did and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys.